Hi, everyone. I'm Mercedes. And I'm Kendra, and we're so excited to be chatting with Aaron Shelby Moore and Lilia Buckingham today. Yay! Yeah, I'm so happy to be here. Yay! <laughs> we're talking about everything from their work on Meet Cute's July series, A Pool for Love, to their to one of the greatest movie musicals, Mamma Mia. Tune in after the interview for a full deep dive on the Greek summary escape. Welcome, Aaron and Lilia. How are you guys doing? Oh, uh, great, Kendra. <laughs> We're so good. We're happy to be here finally after my 800 scheduling. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Life happens. We completely understand. Love you guys. You, you're amazing. You guys, we're just going to get right into it. We want to know about your friendship. I'm very curious. So you guys have been friends for a little bit. What is the quality or characteristic you really value in the other person? That's so cute. Lilia, I'm going to take this away because it's the most obvious answer in the world when it comes to Lilia, which is her selflessness. Like there is nobody who I am just certain that if I have this person in my life, I'm never going to worry about a thing. Like I am, I lived in her house for like six months because I didn't have a place down in LA yet. Like without her, I would have been homeless. There is nothing that I'm ever going to worry about with this woman in my life. She is so kind. She is willing to like empty her bank account just to make sure that you get lunch in you today. Like you are so fine when you have her. I love this woman. Love <laughs> you right now? I love you so much. My, I had a really quick answer too, but they're technically, they're like two, they're two words. Show me up. They go really hand in hand. No, I'm not. That actually just made me like, I'm not okay. Um, she's like the most loyal and empathetic person. Like the, like you said, like you won't have to worry about a thing. Like I know that if there's anyone I need to like understand me and to basically like stand, like stand in your corner as a protector and as a, someone who wants, like genuinely wants the best for you. But it's also on top of that, like the most like emotionally complex and understanding person, it's Ernie. Because there are things that I talk to Ernie about that I can't talk to like anyone else about just because I'm like this. Her empathy is so, so deep. It's just such a deep well of it that it's like I there are times that I just think that no one else gets me in the way that you do because you are so understanding and so in tune with your emotions and everyone else's emotions around you. You are, she's also just so giving as a, like, such a caretaker. She's a type two, like me. But, type the, two. She, oh my God, oh, slit. solidarity. <laughs> Guys, we struggling out here. But you are, the, like, she's the biggest caretaker in, in, I've ever met. That was so sweet. Wait, are we talking oh, three grams? What do you say? Yeah. To yeah. Thank you. Oh, wait. Okay. I didn't know what you guys are talking about. I'm a two oh, wing three. Oh, my God. I'm a two wing three. Yeah. I'm a two wing one. TikTok hates two wing three, Mitsa. <laughs> Where do you sleep? My goodness, they're coming after us. <laughs> Wait, I can't believe you're also oh a two wing three. What did I like? I yeah. was super slow to that. I was like, "Wait, what are we? What are we talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I got it. Oh I hope you guys also know this is just like a conversation Lilia and I have on a daily basis. Always. We'll just Always. call each other and be like, I love you. You're the best person I know. Nobody gets me like you. I know when no one understands me like you do every day. It's like, I love you. We don't get tired of like love. I was just asking no. love bombing, but I feel like that's a negative connotation. <laughs> it's love bombing, but surely the love. Yeah, I just love hearing best friends talk about each other because it's just like it fuels you, you know, like it's just like always the best conversation. And like you just hear like the sweetest words. So I and I love hearing best friend origin stories. So I need to know how you two became friends. This is a silly story. Actually, <laughs> it was during quarantine and we were all like in our I feel like we were all in like our TikTok phase it was when you couldn't like really see anyone and I had seen one of Ernie's TikToks pop up on my for you page and I was like this girl seems really cool so I ended up following her and we kind of just became friends immediately we had a few mutual friends Ernie if you want to like add on to the story but you you're doing good I'll, I'll okay, but the end. <laughs> after we started like kind of texting every day, we would like FaceTime and we were just like always talking. So we lived like five hours apart and we would just drive like for the first time during quarantine, we would just like drive to each other and meet in the middle and sit outside like far apart. But we would both drive like two hours, like two hours, the other person. And we would just like sit outside and chat for hours. And then 
she moved into my house. <laughs> <laughs> like a few months later. <laughs> so sweet. That oh, is internet true. besties. Yeah. yeah. I think it's funny because we were just talking about TikTok right before we got, you know, to recording this podcast. But yeah, and it was it was funny too because the videos I was making at the time are like super cringy now. But it was when like the Harry Potter TikTok was a huge phase. Um, and she would like see my Hermione videos, which is just full circle moment because it was, you know, my my own little love story, the cute things that I had going on on the internet. And that was how we connected. So yeah, it's so cute and true. I think I think that is so sweet. I just I feel like if the people listening, okay. So my question is, if the people listening became your close friends, what could they expect from you two? Like, walk us through a day in the life of what it looks like to be like best friends with you guys. Well, we uh, we, we like we, live together. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say when we're in LA, we like live together. Um, we normally wake up around pretty much the same time. I would say we both wake up with a decent amount of energy. Normally, well, oh, this is actually really cute. When Ernie lived with me and she would sleep in like her room in the back and I would sleep in my house, she would just come and like sit in the bed and we would kind of debrief whatever was going on. Um, and we would have a little morning debrief and then we would normally go and get coffee bean. And love then, coffee bean. Love coffee bean. Then we go home, we make a little, I'll make her some avocado toast. Um, <laughs> we sit by the pool. We also take pride in the fact that because we spend so much time together, we can parallel play. So I was going to say, if you don't talk about parallel play, I can't do that. <laughs> what is that? There's this like child psychology terminology called parallel play. And it's when you put two children next to each other, but give them different activities to do. So they're like technically bonding and spending time with another person, but they're focusing on their own little tasks. So Lilia and I, when it gets to like 4 p.m., we're both exhausted. We need a little time to like, just calm down, go inwards a little bit, but we don't want to stop spending time together. We'll just sit next to each other and go on our own TikToks for like I, an hour. It's interesting. <laughs> and like every five minutes, we'll be like, oh, look at this one. <laughs> it's so true. I'll be like, and you're and I'll be like, watch there. <laughs> yes, that happens sometimes. Um, but I, I'm also like really, I'm like a very sleepy girl. So like during, at like 3 p.m., I'll be like, or 4 p.m., I'll be like, really big day of us going and getting coffee and then sitting by the pool. I think I need to take a nap. <laughs> Sometimes Ernie just sit ne sits next to me while I nap and then I'll wake up and she'll be like, good morning. <laughs> and then the nighttime normally we'll like go out to dinner or like make a dinner. We're, we're big on like doing, doing things. Yeah. Quality time. It's all that quality time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we know you're best friends in real life, but in A Pool for Love, you play love interests. So what was that like playing such a different dynamic in these roles? Uh, well, we it was really funny. We actually like surprised ourselves with the like chemistry that we had. I think it's when you're so comfortable with a person, it's really easy. Like I've actually acted with people that I've been like actually dating before and it's a lot harder. It is it? How so? Yeah. Like... I, I think it's because you, like, when you're acting, it's, you're, like, pulling from real emotions, but a lot of the time, but at least for me, you're, like, you're in a different body, like, you're creating a new person, and I think sometimes it's hard to differentiate the two when you're actually dating the person, you know what I mean? So it, like, blends together. Does that make sense? Whereas I feel like for this, it was really fun for us because we're so comfortable and so, like, really compliment each other when we're doing really anything. That's, like, why our friendship really works, but... Mm -hmm. There was no, like, there was no real, like, bleed in to, like, our personal lives. You know what I mean? Interesting. Oh, that's, like, interesting. That's an interesting perspective that you have there. I, I guess I would have thought it would have been maybe the opposite a little maybe bit. Maybe for some people it is. Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I'm curious, like, can you tell us about, like, was there a moment like just like a, a light bulb where you're like this is my best friend like this is this is my best friend this is a person that like I love spending time with and what was that moment I have one and it's it this shouldn't be the moment but um I know I'm gonna cry it, it, it should have happened before this considering the decision making process that went behind this but um, I'm a very like self-conscious person. And I always think that I put in way more than I'm getting back. Not that I ever thought Lilia didn't love me, but I'm like, I view this woman as my sister. Like she's my family, she's my blood, whatever. And one day we were having a talk 
we were both like, it's been a while since I've gotten a tattoo. I kind of want to get a new one. And then we were like, what if we got matching ones? So Lily and I have a matching heart tattoo right here on our chest. And oh, it was right. Love. It was right after that, that I was like, she just permanently inked her body for the rest of her life. Like, there's no way she doesn't love me as much as I love her. Oh, <laughs> that was that was the moment where I was like, I fully understand what our bond is now. No, oh, that's I, really sweet. <laughs> I'm I'm really trying to. Like, put one time onto when I realized how close we were and I think I'm going to say it is when oh oh I actually have a very distinct memory Ernie I feel like you're not gonna fully understand this but there there was a time when I was being a little bit dramatic and I had just gotten my heart broken not really but like kind of and the only person I wanted to talk to you at all, I was like, oh. no one else, no one else can speak to me. And then I would be like, hey, Ernie. <laughs> and we, I would just be, we would like, I, would, I was in college and I would just like spend like 45 minutes walking, just talking to Ernie because I was like, what if I spoke to no one else? And that's when I was like, this is my, this is my universe, like one of my universe people. And it was great. I was I was going to say, too, I think this was around the same time, if I think you're talking about the thing I'm thinking about. Um, you flew home and surprised me for my 20th birthday. And I had no idea. Be and I, like, texted Lilia a week before. And I was like, I know you're not going to be able to get away from college to come to my birthday. But I just, like, I really want you here. So, like, here's your formal invitation. But, like, I know you're not going to be able to come. So, like, don't stress about it. And then, mm -hmm. like... I think it was, it ended up being like two days after my birthday because it was the weekend after. But um, our mutual friend, Lauren, uh, was like, you need to come over to Lilia's house. She said she like sent us a package in the mail and it delivered there. So you need to come here and like open it with us. And she wants to see your reaction. So I went there and she was like, oh, yeah, it's up in Lilia's room. It's like on her desk. Just so grab it. And I went up there and Lilia was there. I was like, no, I didn't write it. To <laughs> it was really fun. I but that was, I think so. you, but you completely nailed it. But I think that was around the same time that we started like talking on the phone more often because I was just like supporting Lilia through that. I was also going through kind of my own heartbreak at the same time. So we kind of fell to each other at that point. Yeah, I love this. I also have a matching tattoo with one of my best friends. So I totally oh. understand this. Oh my gosh, you guys are melting my heart. I, <laughs> I, want to, I want to talk more about A Pool for Love. What was it like working on this project that's audio versus like a TV film role? Um, for me, I had just come from, um, filming, a uh, feature. So I, it was very, it was so different and it was really like, you know, I, I feel like so much goes into both like podcasts and like actual on-screen acting, but it was kind of nice not having to worry about anything other than like my delivery. I felt like I, doing a podcast was very, very, it was really different in the sense that like, I felt a lot more introspective. Does that make sense? When I was like delivering my lines, like I didn't really have to worry about like how I looked or anything. It was just kind of the feeling and the raw emotion, which I feel like when you're on, also the feature that I was working on is a lot of like, there's a lot of like outward things that I have to worry about. Whereas this was just like, all right, inward, who like who is this character how am I delivering these lines what do I sound like and that was that was really cool to like go right from one to the other yeah no that makes so much sense just like you when you're recording it just audio you just all the focus is just on like yeah saying it and feeling mm -hmm. it versus like when you're on screen I'm sure you're so hyper aware of like what your body's doing too okay. yes yeah 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 that it was just like relaxing kind of like, it was just really fun. It was, not that the feature wasn't also super fun, just very, like, very different. Totally. Uh, and, and Aaron, you, you also play the lead in A Pool for Love. Like, how was that for you? Like, can you tell us a little bit more about your background in acting and, like, how this experience yeah. was for you playing the lead? I, well, first of all, this was, like, one of my very first, like, real lead roles which was a lot of fun for me and just super cool and especially because I got to share it with Lilia and like I look up to Lilia as an actor so much and to like be able to not only like bounce off of her and learn from her in that moment but 
you know, to, to have a role of this caliber alongside her is just really cool. But um, I grew up acting mostly on stage. So a lot of my experience is like theater and this big theatrical style of acting. And I've done a few like on camera or I do like self tapes, stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. And that ex all three of those experiences are just like wildly different. I would almost say though, that the podcast was more like theater um, because on theater, you have to be like super extravagant and um, overact almost because you have to have people on the back of the theater be able to see your facial expressions and your movements and all of that. Um, and transitioning to camera was hard because you have to learn to tone that back down because the camera's right here and you don't need to like do all of this. Um, but with the podcast, when I was just reading the lines and not worrying about what my face or what my hands were doing, I realized I was like acting like this a lot and like making really dumb faces and like really, really diving into it. And it was just fun to do that again. <laughs> Oh, that's so great. Love it. <laughs> Thank goodness. So without spoiling too much, what's your favorite thing about each of your characters in A Pool for Love? I, I mean, when I first read the scripts, I like fell in love with Marissa. I don't know what I'm allowed to say and what I'm not allowed to say, but I, <laughs> um, I really, really love the fact that she's very sure of who she is. You know what I mean? She knows who she is. She's not really ashamed to be who she is. And she's, I think, I really related to her in a lot of the ways of like, I've always been very sure and I've never really been ashamed of like who I love. And I've, I think a lot of the times I've had a lot of experiences where I've kind of had to be the Marissa for people of being like, it's okay. Like, I'll wait for you to figure something out and take your time. Like, I don't want, to be like an experiment, but I, I will be there for you. And I, and I will help you because I just think she has a very like kind heart and really cares and really like loves deeply and selflessly. And I like to say that that's how like I existed for a little while, just when I had like kind of first come out. It's really amazing. Um, okay. This is, we're going to do just like a speed round. Okay. I want to know what rom com and any do you guys wish you had started? Just give me, just give me a name. Just give me a title. Uh, oh, man. Things I hate about you. <laughs> Iconic. Slay. As cat. Oh my I, God. I would love to when see I, you do that. That'd be so when funny. I did, when I did theater growing up, I played Catherine and Taming Up the Shrew. So it's like, you have to, I want to do it to so play bad. You that, there you go. You already have that preparation for it. It's like fate. It's like fate. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Mine is Mamma Mia, without a doubt. But that's also because I played Sophie growing up. Oh. So I just did the UCR route of thinking. <laughs> <laughs> we said we need to be prepped for the job. We were yeah, tired. Like, I've already done it. I can do it. Great. <laughs> yeah, no. Because also, like, I played that role and I was like, she's me. <laughs> and it has left like a lasting impression on my life i'm pretty sure that yeah. movie is like half of my personality love it oh you know gosh. you know what's funny lily so mercedes and i both saw the trailer for hocus pocus 2 we're so <laughs> excited we cannot wait it's going to be awesome it looks so freaking good um, Hello! <laughs> and i want to know like was this a movie that you watched growing up and if so what was it like going from watching the movie to now starting the sequel um i mean hocus feels very not real to me like i don't think that this actually happened i i watch a lot of you know i okay going kind of off on a tangent slightly just for one second i really grew up in fandoms like i, I really grew up like watching the youtube interviews and like um like the video edits and whatever like i really grew up as a fan for a lot of things that i like was into i'm, I'm a very like i love to analyze media i know it sounds really dumb but Same. i'm I'm a big, I literally, my friend and I, I right now, I'd be like, hey, you got to like leave me alone for 20, like 30 minutes. I have to do something. We're literally analyzing like who would play us in TV shows and what like, <laughs> like music would play behind big moments. And he's like, I know who you're talking about. Um, anyway, I, so like kind of getting to be on the other end of that and like getting to be asked these questions about like, what was it like for you? I'm like, oh my God, like someone's going to watch this as an interview and be like, it's going to be like me. I, I, this is a weird way of describing this, but it's like, I feel like I've perceived so many like things on the other side of it that now that I'm being like, yeah, you know, hocus pocus, the 
getting I grew okay, anyway growing up I watched the movie I'm a big Halloween girl so yes I of course knew what it was I was actually going to stop acting when I was going to college last summer um and this was one of my like kind of last auditions and it said Hocus Pocus too and I was like well I have to go out for this I was like guys there's no way that I'm going to book this like I've been auditioning for nine years I've only booked like one or two things I get so close and I never book it like there's no way Come to August, three weeks before I'm supposed to go to school, I get the call. They're like, hey, you're moving to Rhode Island. And I was like, what? <laughs> um, so, yes, going on set that first day was surreal. It's, 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 it was a, it's still a surreal experience. Even when I went to go do reshoots and I was working, um, there was a day when it was just me and Bet, And... I was standing there just like talking to her. We were talking about this book or something. And I was like, hey, you're, you're talking to Bette Midler right now. Because <laughs> co-workers, like they're co-stars. And I, I kind of know. had to just sit there and be like, what? I like, couldn't what imagine. is my life? It's literally reshoots. I worked for four months, four or five. And then like, it was our, like some of our last days of shooting literally a couple of weeks ago. And I still was like, this is fake. <laughs> I don't know if this is real. And then the trailer came out and I was like, who is that? Yeah. Not <laughs> real. <laughs> um, I literally like have a little binx over there. Like, yeah, I wonder if you can see it. Oh. I'm a little black cat. Oh, I see it. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I, I could talk about Hocus for hours, but I'm, it's been really, it's really cool. I'm very, very grateful. That's so cool. I, I can remember. Up. Right after Lilia booked it, we went to Disneyland together. And when it got to nighttime, we like went into the Emporium that's on Main Street. And there was like this whole Hocus Pocus set up. And that's where she went and bought the little Binks cat. And we were like chatting with the cashier. And the cashier was like, oh my God, I love Hocus Pocus. Lilia was like, yeah, I heard that they're shooting a sequel. It's so <laughs> crazy. And, and the cashier was like, oh yeah, yeah. Like, didn't they, I feel like I heard that they just wrapped it. And Lilia was like, no, I think. Starting filming this <laughs> but I'm not sure. <laughs> but I don't know, and I could be very wrong about that. No, I'm I, I'm a horrible liar. I'm not kidding. I they don't really tell us a lot about like anything. Like literally, we didn't see the trailer until everyone else saw it yesterday. Like oh my we God. don't. Oh yeah, no, I don't know a thing. Um, oh wow. Like I found out when the movie was coming out through Entertainment Weekly. I was like, cool, <laughs> September thirtieth. Um, but. Yeah, I'm re like it's. I shouldn't know anything because I will accidentally <laughs> like spoil it. I You'll I will it. I have heard. <laughs> yeah, I was doing an interview for D23 the other day, and I was like, I'm really nervous. Like, what if I say something? And he was like, By the end of the interview, the interviewer was like, Nah, like don't worry, you're not the Tom Holland of Hocus Pocus. And I was like, <laughs> Don't say that yet because I might be. <laughs> anyway. God, that's so funny. I feel like I've asked so many questions. Versus, I'll throw it over to you. <laughs> yes, I want to talk a little bit more about rom coms. So, I really want to know what is your favorite? Who's your favorite rom com heartthrob out of all the rom com Ooh. people out there? Ooh. That's a fantastic question. Rom com heartthrob. Man, I'm gonna have to like look through my letterbox to get an act. <laughs> <laughs> I have like a list on Letterboxd of my favorite rom com. Just for inspo for you guys, my favorite rom com heartthrob is is um Justin Long. Uh, I'm a producer. Lucy ever says, "Hear me talk about him all the time." I love Justin Long. <laughs> I, I feel like this is kind of a like deep cut, but I love James Marsden. We yeah, uh, this is James, we, and he might be fun. my favorite. Yeah. Yep. He, like 27 dresses, James Marsden. Yep. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yes. Phenomenal. Yeah. Enchanted yeah. James Marsden. Yeah. Oh my God. We need him. Oh! In more. We need him in more. Yes. Yeah. Where is yeah. he? <laughs> Where is he? I swear. He was in. He was on in the show. Um, dead, dead to Me? Is that what that show was called? That came out on Netflix a couple of years ago. I watched oh, the first oh, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. Oh, Great show. With Christina Applegate and yeah. Linda oh, Cardellini. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love yep. Linda Cardellini. I don't know if she's in any rom coms, but love her. She's no. right. I'm not a big girl who's into guys in rom coms. <laughs> Do you have a favorite rom com queen? 
just like your favorite person you'll watch any of their rom-coms or any of their movies i feel like i should be able to say this for you hold on <laughs> shailene woodley is i i loved all of her stuff and i like watch everything she did religiously even the secret life of the american teenager oh same love it <laughs> Jason, she just a rom-com guy jason sudeikis so good interesting that's a, what's that's the sleeping one sleeping with other people it sure is so D-O-D. good <laughs> i love it i wouldn't really say that's my answer but i have a lot of friends who are really into jason so Spin. i'm gonna go with him all right he is a hot dad i want to yeah. know you know obviously you guys we we want to talk about mama mia i would love to know why you guys love it so much and also too do you have a favorite line from the movie because we recently did that it was great um <laughs> or a favorite song, I, if you can't think of the line yeah favorite song oh i can i have too many favorite songs i love mama mia it's been like one of my favorite movies since i was little because my mom and i grew up watching it together um and it's also just one of like the very rare movies where even there's there's technically conflict in it. It's just like pure happiness. Like I'm ne- I'm never stressed when I'm watching it. I there's no parts I have to skip through. It's just pure like you watch it and you want to be there and you want to live it and you're like I don't care if I go through every single conflict that's in this movie cuz they're so just livable cuz you're on an island in Greece and having a beautiful wedding. And you have a hot fiance and like you have this amazing mother and like it, it, it's perfect. It's perfect. Your mother's Meryl Street. How bad can life be? Um <laughs> my favorite song from the movie is either um Honey Honey or Name of the Game, which is kind of a deep cut because it's not in the movie, but it's on the soundtrack. I know that it's fantastic. Fantastic Absolutely. song. I don't think I can add on to you're so right. Like, <laughs> that's literally why I like Mamma Mia, too. It's just happy vibes. I love happy vibes. I get very anxious happy vibes. watching movies. So there's a lot of, I hate conflict. So I'm like, if there's a conflict. I'm like, how are they going to get out of this? Um, <laughs> but my favorite songs, got like, I can't not, it's the top three. I can't really choose. Honey, Honey, I've been told, I was in the car the other day with my friend Lily, and she was like, you know, guys, like the instrumental part of Honey, Honey? Mm-hmm. She was like, if there was background music of you walking into a room, it would be this. Like, this is how you are perceived. It was so cute. She was like, this is how I perceive you. And everyone was like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, (laughs) guys. But I'm like, whenever I'm at a party, I'm like there being like, play, give me, give me, give me, right. I'm like, I don't care who you are. Literally, I was in Florida the other day with people I did not know. And I like walk up to their boat where their speaker is. And I'm like, put on give me give me give me they're like who are you i was like no matter um and then lay all your love on me is like oh good one i was in mexico with actually ernie and my two other best friends and i was taking pictures with one of them and she was like get on the floor and do like lay all your love on me and i was like shut up and she was like i just know that like you want to like live out that dream one day i was like god i love you you're right we all do. Guys, we do a segment called Couples Therapy where we like to give advice to the couples in the movie on how they can improve their relationship. So I'm curious for you, Erin and Lilia, what advice would you give to Sophie and Skye? And what advice would you give to Donna and Sam? I'm horrible. Ooh. Gosh, that's a good one. I would be like, Sophie and Skye just communicate. I like would say. Their only issue is that Sophie didn't tell him that she invited her three dads and then they almost called off the wedding because of it. I'm like, just like, that's who you're marrying. Just be like, hey, it's really important for me to have my dad here. I'm not sure who he is. I'm thinking about doing this. Ernie and I were telling each other and and being like, this is the easiest advice ever. Just like communicate and like ask what you want. (laughs) Mind you, Ernie and I are like, (laughs) talk about our feelings. Oh no! And I have been going back and forth for like, ever. God, like, but God. Just, like it'll be so much easier. Just communicate. And mind you, we're like, like everything would be solved if you just knew instead of guessed. <laughs> but no, already yeah, I said, so. let's play the guessing game, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, but for Donna and Sam, I feel like it's too late for them. I'd be like, don't get married yet. What are you doing? Interesting. Interesting. You think it's like late for them? No, well, they already got married, so I can't tell them anymore not to get married. <laughs> <laughs> Said they're not going to take. 
I, I but like you it. just refound each other. She just After sent winner winner takes it all to him. You're gonna sing winner takes it all to him and then marry him an, an hour later. Time works, <laughs> time works differently in Greece. That's true. Yeah, that is true. Proven. <laughs> it's true. Oh, you're right. I Lily, do you have different advice? No, it's the same. <laughs> I should be like, maybe just chat it out. Yeah, maybe like, like go on a trip together. Like, see, maybe like spend a week living together. See if you like really want it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just don't like, I want to be like, don't move too fast. Yeah. But then I feel like a hypocrite. Your advice sounds very similar to like Mercedes and I, like we always kind of do like a deep dive into their relationship. We're like, okay, well, mm -hmm. this is where, this is why you're behaving this way. This is what you need to work on. This is why you need to see a therapist. I love, like, yes. my favorite <laughs> thing to do ever is just psychoanalyze other people. <laughs> like their childhood <laughs> made them act like this in the relationship because mm -hmm. and people are like, shut up. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Donna, are you just scared of losing your daughter? So you need another companion. And that's why you immediately married yeah. Sam. Yeah. Like <laughs> maybe we'll work on that first. Let's discuss. And then we can marry Sam. Yeah. We just, I mean, I personally think Sophie and Sky are way too young to be getting married. Oh yeah. my God. I'm oh, I forgot 20. they're 20. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> literally, that's literally my letterbox review. Not to bring up letterbox again. But is this movie is a horror movie? I Sophie getting married at twenty because I'm twenty. My mom got married when she was twenty, and actually, like a week ago, I was the exact age. To we were together. Was yeah, like, I was the exact age to the day that my mom was when she got married to my dad, uh, and they're still together. Their thirtieth anniversaries this year. But uh, I'm like, oh my god, because I grew up telling my mom I'm gonna get married at twenty, like you did, and she was like, no, that hell you're not. <laughs> you are not gonna get married at twenty. Good mom. Good mom. Yeah. Good mom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, I agree. Way too young. But they, they did resolve that on their own at the end. So proud of them. Proud of them for that. Sophie did call off the wedding because she was like, we need to like travel the world a little bit first. We thank need you. to just, yeah, thank goodness. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Lily, any last minute thoughts? I, I don't think I could, like, I have a Pisces Venus. So I'm a bit of an imaginate, like I love to like fantasize about my relationships. So every relationship I've been in, I'm like, this is what we would look like in the future. So I can't even get mad at Sophie because she's definitely <laughs> Pisces Venus. <laughs> like she's Gosh, just I see that. Pisces Venus. I, that girl is that. A I mean, she, Venus. she's literally surrounded by water. She's fully yeah. Pisces in my head. Like her whole yeah, the blonde wavy Pisces. hair, the blue eyes. That's, that's a Libra like, rising though. That's a Libra oh, rising. Beautiful. The eyes. Yes. Her whole face is Libra. And I also think she might have a Leo moon. Ooh. We've done this before. We did this like really heavy. We rewatched the High School Musical trilogy and thought of like, <laughs> all of the main it's characters. So funny. I love that. It's and like the they were funniest pretty... thing <laughs> ever. We love doing this. We're like, what is their birth chart? We're I like really G girl. Fun. Wait, I'm not even kidding. Hold on. Stay there. This is like our therapy that you guys do for the characters. We go through and we're like, what's their astrology? Yeah. How do they, how do they live? Different language. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I just started reading this book. Me and my friend have a book club, but we would, we annotate in the book. Um, but in the front of the book, we do all the characters like astrological charts. Started reading this Such yesterday. Yeah. Here are all there. Love it. My handwriting is really bad. I get told that is every such day. Such a good idea. I'm gonna start doing that too. It's really it's, fun. I, like I'll have to yeah. like a question mark though, unless they're like a confirmed Capricorn, then I'll be like confirmed Cap. Like it's so yeah. funny. <laughs> oh I my goodness! It. It's like this not normal. Conversation. This conversation's been so much fun. You guys are awesome. Thank Come back anytime. Thank you. Yeah, we love too. Yes, yeah, love taking out with guys in real club room. <laughs> yes, share your socials or anything you want to share with our listeners before we go. I mean, not that I'm one to like self plug, but my Instagram is just Aaron Shelby Moore. Lilia's is even easier, just Lilia. Um, but yeah, and we'll be posting a lot about the upcoming podcast on there and on my Twitter as well, which is same and Shelby Moore. Um, so yeah, go see just to keep up with the podcast, see when the new episodes come out because it'll be really fun. I'm pretty sure yeah. my my Twitter is Buckingham Lilia. The only thing that I know is that my Instagram is Lilia, but I think it's Buckingham Lilia. And if you, you see someone t like retweeting a lot of Taylor Swift lyrics, like Lyric Bot, 
tweets, then that's me. <laughs> yeah, I have I have her tweet notifications on and I would text her every time she would retweet a new like Taylor Swift lyric that was really on the nose for what I knew she was going through. And I'd be like, Lilia, we doing OK? No, it's you actually just, so funny. You just, like, you just retweeted a, an Elicit Affairs lyric like, yeah, we're, we're not doing, we're not doing Elicit Affairs. Stop. No, oh, the Elizabeth Affairs. No, I oh hope from now on you're just like retweeting like Invisible String or like any yeah. like like lover song. Yeah, I've bought. Yes, you are like very lover. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Guys, we loved having you hang out with us in the rom com room. Please come back anytime. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you for having us. <laughs> this was so fun. I've had such a good time. Yes, this is so fun.